There's been a lot of talk about shorts lately. There have been a lot of updates about shorts lately. A lot of people are jumping on the bandwagon with shorts even more than ever before. And a lot of people are jumping ship from doing shorts at all even more than ever before. Have you found yourself asking the question, should I? Should I do shorts? Well, today I want to talk about a couple of a couple of things that would have to happen for me to go all in on shorts. I would go all in on shorts if this were to happen. Number one, I would go all in on shorts if I had the op- option to keep shorts from appearing in the shorts feed. Because you see, the shorts feed is an entirely different algorithm. It's an entirely different algorithm, which is uh, an entirely different platform you might think of, really. It's very different viewer behavior. People swipe through their feed, and they quickly make a decision whether they're going to watch something, whether they're not going to watch something. Whereas when it appears in the browse feed, which is where long-form videos appear, and there's a short shelf, that's a very different way of choosing to watch a short. When it appears there, you make a choice. You're, you're browsing through your feed and you see different thumbnails and you decide what thumbnails you're going to click on, what thumbnails you're not going to click on. And then you also see shorts there as YouTube is pushing these shorts in front of you on this short shelf. And so if I could make shorts and have them only go in the short shelf, I would feel much more confident that I wouldn't be sending these shorts to a completely different algorithm, which I really am viewing as a different platform. It's very different audience behavior. It's essentially like putting it on Instagram or putting it on TikTok, which I don't have a problem with because... I do have Instagram, even though I haven't posted on it forever. I don't have TikTok. I don't think I'll ever be on TikTok. But I don't have a problem with that. But I do have a problem with the conflicting issue that can happen on the main channel with shorts that viewers watch in the shorts feed and only watch in the shorts feed and long-form videos that viewers watch in the browse feed for long form videos and only in the browse feed. And there's not a whole lot of crossover. And for a time, even YouTube had an issue with the algorithms not communicating with each other. And that's something very different than I'm covering in this video. But they don't have this down very well. Let's get to the next one. I would go all in on shorts if they provided a clickable link to allow me to link to my long-form videos. You might think, well, they do. (laughs) Well, if you want to catch up on the news, they're actually, it's gone. It probably is gone by now. Uh, Yes, it is. Actually, it's gone by now. Um, They took that away. Now, they are going to provide something by the end of September, and it is already starting to roll out, and that is going to allow a way in which viewers can be linked to the long-form content from the shorts, but it's not the same as putting it in the description or even in the pinned comment. And personally, I think nothing beats having it in the pinned comment with a clickable link because I find that descriptions are often ignored. I find that uh, certainly in mobile, when people are just viewing on their phones, descriptions are ignored, but the pinned comment I have found to be helpful. At least some people have have clicked on through to long-form content from the pinned comment more than certainly would do so from the description. So I would go all in if they provided a clickable link to and allowed me to use it in the pinned comment to link to my long form content. And number three, I would go all in on shorts. If I could guarantee that everything was going to the same audience, if it was going to the same audience, uh, the whole thing is that YouTube creates a profile. It creates a profile for the viewer and it creates a profile for the channel and really creates a profile for the video. And it's in the matchmaking business. It is matching up that profile from the channel and the viewer. 
And certainly that's how the long form works and it is viewer focused. And so that means that a viewer gets on, they want to watch something and it's going to pull from what is available. And there's lots of competition, as I'm sure you know, but it's going to pull from videos that are available that it feels matches that person's interests. Well, short the short algorithm, I'm sure, works the same way, but it is a very different audience. And so there's no guarantee that you're getting the same demographic. There's no guarantee that you're getting the same kind of audience. And there's a lot of trouble with the crossover. Uh Yes, this could actually be said for any different type of format in the sense that there are those that like to watch live streams. There are those that like to watch 10-minute videos. There are those that like to watch 45-minute videos. There are those that like to watch 5-minute videos. And some viewers may have the behavior that they only watch 45-minute podcasts and they don't watch videos less than 10 minutes. And others, the opposite. And others only watch shorts. And I understand you could actually make that argument for almost any video type. The problem is they're distributed in a completely different feed. And that's where I have the concern. And that's what holds me back on it. That's what has made me think about if I was going to go all in on it, I would jump to a different channel. I would make it an entirely different channel because it just seems like a risk to the long form content, especially if you've already built up that audience and you don't want to hurt the channel that has been growing. Well, what about you? What about you? What do you think about shorts? Do you create shorts? Are you creating them right now? Do you plan to create them in the future? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you watch shorts? Do you have a habit of watching shorts? Do you like shorts? Do you hate shorts? Let me know. I think this would be interesting to hear from you. And what would make you post more shorts? What is it that would make you post more shorts? Or maybe you're posting a ton of shorts. And why is it that you've chosen to do that? Any one of these questions, I'd love to hear your thoughts. This would just be an interesting thing to hear for anyone that has come across this video. All right, well, I do hope that was helpful. You've been listening to Get the Word Out. You would normally be watching me. This is the first faceless video I've ever done. My name's Adam Markley, helping you get the word of God out to the masses. I deal with the theology and practice of online ministry. Now there's going to be a video on your screen, and it's about do shorts hurt your channel? I go in a little bit more depth in that video. Well, I just deal with it a little bit differently in exactly what my approach is at this very moment. So go ahead and click on that link. Go ahead and click on that video to find out what I'm doing right now with my primary channel and shorts. And I'll see you over there.